All right, so let's jump right in. Uh, this video tutorial, we're going to cover the uh, older method of layered materials in Unreal Engine and then talk about the new layered materials, how to set them up, uh, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. Uh, so a couple things out the gate. Um, we're currently using 4.19.1 in this video tutorial. And if you haven't already, you're going to have to go into your project settings uh, to enable this since it is still experimental and from your project settings you'll need to go to the rendering tab and then at the very bottom you need to make sure that support material layers is checked experimental if you do that it'll ask you to restart go ahead and do that and you should have access to all of the features for this if you do not you will not see them Okay, so I've put a couple examples um, ahead of time that we'll cover, but still we'll go through the process of building them from scratch. Now, a quick note on this one that uh, if you're wondering why should I use layered materials, typically it's to have a cohesive library of materials at your disposal. So say, for example, you've got a series of different metals that you want to use throughout your entire level with different characters and stuff like that. Um, this setup works really well to keep consistency in that. Um, additionally, uh, part of the reason you may want to set this up is to also expose some parameters so artists have a little bit more control to change some things, but not too much where it could break. So uh, with this setup, I'll show you again how we how we'll build something kind of the traditional way, the older method. Uh, and then we'll do the exact same process, but using the new method. So. Um, Let's jump in first with the, the old method. We'll do that whole process and then we'll switch over to the new method. So first things first, uh, it's probably assumed that you're going to want to create a material, right? Something that you can use in the layer function. Uh, typically you may go in, you wanna go, hey, I wanna create a new material or from materials and textures material. Uh, unfortunately, if you use this method, it, you can't leverage, uh, you, you can't utilize that within this layered setup. You actually need to create a material function. So we'll just do that real quick. So we'll just create a new material function, name it this, and then let's set it up as we would want to use it in um, for the layered stack. So we create this. First things first, we need to do make material attributes since we need to have something to plug into our output. And then from here, it should look pretty similar to a regular material. So I'll just create a three vector and then maybe just a couple other nodes. So I'll do this, we'll plug it into a base color, yada, yada. I should preface to the, the the scope of this kind of video tutorial walkthrough is not to show you how to set up materials uh, in the sense of uh, being able to create some, some very beautiful, very robust, uh, very powerful materials. Um, that's, that's a totally separate thing. This is really just to show you how to take those materials you do build and throw them in. So with the setup, I've got a very, very simple material function. Uh, it, again, it looks like a material, but the difference is we have this make material attributes and it goes out to an output. Um, and that's what will allow us to leverage everything that's being pushed through this. So from base color all the way down to pixel depth offset, um, we'll be able to take that into account and be able to utilize that with our layered setup. Um, so with this, you guys could take this as far as you want to with uh, adding different uh, customized things, different layers, um, just absolutely making this a, a massive material but this will work for now um, okay so we'll, we'll stop there so this this is kind of our first our first material right um, actually no, I'll, I'll back up so let's let's say that you want to expose some of these parameters right um, actually no I'll save that because we'll, we'll do this so okay so we've got a material which in this case I've, I've set up these these four here plastic a plastic B C and D which you can see looks yeah, that was was the wrong one uh, looks very similar to what we had before right like we've got uh, just some, some parameters coming in that make this look like a material okay so let's move to the next setup okay which will be we'll duplicate this one so in order to again use using the older method we're going to create a new material I'm going to go inside of this and I'm going to go ahead and for this guy I'm going to switch him to to use material attributes right because we're not going to plug anything in there and then this is where we're going to start utilizing our functions so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here I'm just going to grab these four and I'm going to drop them in okay we've got plastic B A B C and D 
Okay. So this is where I'm going to back up. So plastic K is a little bit different, right? We've got base color metallic speculant roughness exposed that we can plug something into, but we don't for the others. That's where I was going to show you this one. So with material functions, right? Like I could, I could come in here, I could right click these and I could say convert to parameter. Okay, cool. I'll leave them as is for now, whatever we'll name them and we'll save it. And again, this is our new material function. I'll go back into our material setting up, drag this in and nothing. I don't have any outputs. In order to get access to these variables, these different parameters, we have to do something a little bit different. So I'll show you how I set it up here real fast, and then I'll, I'll show you the example that I'd already set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this where they are no longer parameters. Yeah, we'll just do this, we'll just convert to constant. Okay, and then the thing you have to do is you have to inject this thing in between. So it's a function input, okay? And with this function input, this is what will allow you, in this case, it should be a vector three. Okay, we do the same thing for here. So we do function input, and this should be a scalar. Okay, and now we have these parameters exposed. So if I save this, and I go back to the material we're setting up, and I drop this in there, now you can see. Now, granted this says in one, in, that's just because we have in, in one, we could rename this to base color, save it, go back, and there you see that parameter. So we'll ignore this setup. I'll open the plastic A, which I have, and you can see well, that's what we have set up. So I've got a vector three, a scalar, uh, three scalars actually for metallic specular and roughness. And again, the, the scope of this is not to show you how to set up these materials. It's it's really more just to show you that when utilizing the older method, you had to use these kind of inputs in order to expose those variables. So you could have additional uh, artist controls. They could do kind of their own little tweaks and stuff like that, so on and so forth. But I just want to show you guys that that's how you get to, uh, that's, that's how you get to those exposed parameters is you have to add a function input again, right click, function, function input and then change it as appropriate. So uh, we'll leave it there. Okay, so I've got these materials, right? And actually let's add the other thing, um, which by the way, these uh, all these assets you're seeing here, I just grabbed these from the Paragon assets, which are free um, just for simplicity's sake. But uh, the, the next step that we're assuming is that you want a layered, uh, a layered mask, which in this case, if we do, I'll show you, that's the red channel, go green channel, and blue channel. So you can see that all of these are set up to just give us different control over where we want certain materials to apply. Uh, that's all it is, just a layered mask. Very, very simple. So we have our base materials, the things that we want to use, and we have our masks. Now, how do we get them plugged in? Uh, usually what you, you use is a matte blend standard right here. Okay. And with this process, you would take, for example, base material, and a top material. And in this case, we use a red as an alpha. So it would it would blend those appropriately that the base would show across the board. And then the top material would be applied wherever that mask is shown. And then we would just continue to layer these. I'm gonna delete this and show you something else that's been added. It's been in there for kind of a while, is this matte layer blend, tin layer blend. Okay, so this is just a souped up version of the process I just showed. If we go into it, you can see that it's using that same thing, a matte layer blend standard, takes a base material, a top material, and then an alpha. Now in this case, this should look familiar. These are those inputs we had before, which exposes those parameters outside of it. So if we go back, we can see this is what we have. Background, bake normal, layer one mask, layer one, layer two, so on and so forth. So with this process, we would go in, we'd set, say, hey, I want this as my background or my base level. This one I'd want as my layer one. This is my layer two, layer three. And then we'd start plugging in our mask appropriately. This goes out to our new material. Now it's gonna throw some errors because I've got this, but that essentially is the process of setting up a layered material using kind of the older method of things. So I'm just gonna ignore this one since we've already got one set up and I'll show you here. And this is what I've done ahead of time. So there's our plastic A. Now again, I've just added these additional uh, parameters that I wanted control over that I could go in and tweak and, and make 
however I wanted to. We've got our masks being plugged into our layered masks. And then there's this other bit, which is kind of the last and um, I think very important part. And, that, and that's this addition of a baked normal. Now, uh, really all your baked normal is, is a model specific normal map that you want to apply over top of everything. So, you know, say for example, all of our plastics have some kind of normal detail in them, right? Something to give them a nice, real subtle, rich look to them. The, the normal information is going to be passed out through all the blends and everything, but we're adding this additional one on top, which is specific to the model. So very important. Um, and, and I'll show you guys how to set that up in the new method as well, but just just know that this is kind of the core of the old method, right? You've got a, uh, a library of materials, you've got masks where you want to hide them, and then you just add this additional baked uh, normal. So this right here is that setup. This is everything that you would need to then apply to your model, your static mesh, and that would have all of your materials as they were blended, so on and so forth, and, and, and that's it. So this is a complete uh, material, uh, blend, you know, layered material using the old method. So um, again, we'll cover real fast with that. So you create your material functions, that becomes your library. So those are your ultimately your, your kind of your master, um, your, your master library of materials. You would go in, just create a, a basic material, switch it to use material attributes, go ahead and add this 10 layer blend, bring in all of your material functions that you've created, your masks, your normal, apply it, and done. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, newer method. So like I said, I, I, I want to step through this similar to the way we did with the older one. So the first things first that we want to create is our materials, right? Well, this is the new method. So you go into materials and textures, right? Um, the original, uh, the older way we use material function. Now we use material layer. But if you notice something, notice how you've got this this function and it's got the blue the blue indicator. It's the same thing here. So you'd create a new material here. We'll go into it and it looks pretty much the same with the exception of these two things. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll show you here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna steal some of this old stuff. So we'll take like uh, for example, we'll take our plastic A, right? I'll go in here and I will grab these parameters and the bake attributes. I'm not going to use these inputs because those don't apply with the new method. So I'll just take these guys, I'll take it over here and I will paste and voila. So we'll take our green or I'm sorry, we'll take our, uh, uh, our red in, we'll go metallic, specular, yada, yada. Again, the scope of this is not to show you guys how to set up a material. This is really just more, uh, or how to create robust materials, really just more how to get that information that you have in. So, okay. So we have our setup here and we've got this new stuff. This is easy to just, just plug it into preview. Okay. And that's it. So now our materials displaying. Woohoo. Okay. But it's important to note here that the, the process of right clicking, creating materials textures using this new material layer, this has the information in it specifically for the new layered setup. So you have to use this. You can't just use a regular material function. You have to use this. So again, everything kind of uh, to the left of this make material attributes can be as robust as you want it. Um, I'll apply this and save and show you that that eventually goes away. I don't know why it doesn't update real time. Um, so if you guys have existing materials, just simply copy paste everything up to the make material attributes, plug it into the preview and we're done. So again, like I said, I will delete these so you understand. Uh, that's what these guys have been set up. So I'll use plastic B and you can see uh, it's identical to our original kind of material function with the exception that we have this new uh, the, the, these new input nodes, uh, but everything on this side is exactly the same. So nothing, nothing new there. Okay. So in the previous one, I also showed you to how to expose some parameters, right? Uh, if we go back to plastic a with the older method, we had to create these nodes in between these function input nodes in order to uh, give access to this material um, when we set it up in the whole layered stack. Okay, so with the new method, that process is as simple as working with regular materials. What I mean by that is all of these I've simply just right clicked and I've uh, converted to a parameter. So for example, if I add in say another scalar here 
and I want to expose this so I have access to it outside um, of this whole setup and I can manipulate it. Simply right click and convert to a parameter. And then you can name it whatever you want. We'll just say normal, something like that. You can give it a group, whatever you want to, and then plug it in. So that's what I've done with all of these. I simply just right click to convert to a parameter and they are now exposed and I gave them names. Okay, so we'll ignore that. All right, so the next step that we want to do is we want to create the material that we'll eventually apply. So if you remember with the old method, uh, this is what we created, right? We swap this to use material, uh, use material attributes. We've done the 10 layer blend and added all of our functions. This is where things change. And it's very important to kind of note about this. So the first thing first that we'll do is we need to create just a regular material. That's it, nothing fancy, okay? Now, this is going to serve as our master kind of template for the whole layered setup. Um, a, a beautiful thing about the new setup is it's, it's really dynamic in the sense of you can add or remove additional materials on the fly, right? So you don't have to go back into the original material setup and uh, go back in, change the nodes, swap everything. The new method uses it on the fly. So uh, with that, we don't have to create a material necessarily as much as we need to create a master in our instances. So um, I'll explain what that means here. Um, so that's what we're gonna set up. So again, all we've done is we've just created a, a new material. Um, nothing fancy, no uh, no new setup, it's just simply a material. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and do use material attributes, that's important. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a layers. And I believe, let's make sure we get the right one. I think it's at the very, very bottom, yep. Okay, so this material attributes layers, and I'm just gonna call it layers. To be honest with you, the name doesn't really matter. Um, I haven't seen it really shown up anywhere, but um, for all intents and purposes, this is what you need to create. Um, so again, right click, click layer, go to the very bottom, and it's this new material attribute layers, and it should look identical to this. Okay, we're gonna plug this into our make material attributes. Okay, that's it. That's literally the entire setup for our, our quote master um, layered material setup. And this is all you really need. So one one other last step, which is very important, is go ahead and just add one element to this, okay? So let's just be our first layer. I don't know if this is a bug, if this is gonna be fixed, but it seems to work best if you just add one layer to it, okay? So, uh, but again, nothing in here. It's simply just leave it as is, add one layer, and we'll save this. Okay, so this that is the setup that you would need for a layered Material master, okay? So I'll take this guy, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do create material instance. I'm just gonna name this, let's just say, um, model one, okay, whatever. So I'm not going to apply this new material to my mesh, I'm gonna apply this new model one. So if I double click this, you'll see, aha, there's our setups. Okay, so where do we go from here? Okay, so I've got these layers and stuff, but how do I, uh, how do I actually, um, in, add the, the materials that I want to it. Well, that's pretty simple. All right, so in, in the old method, right, look here, we had to drag the material functions in and then hook them up and, and do everything with it and then blend our uh, mask into it. With the new one, what's nice about this is that if you expand it, you can click here, okay? Now here's something important to note. If you notice that I just have these four, right? Um, if you remember recalling what I said a little bit earlier too, with the new setup, you have to create these new materials. You can't just create additional old material functions, right? So right click here, materials, textures, and new material layer, not material function. So that's what you're seeing here are these new material, um, make sure I get this right, material layers. Uh, and that's what these four are. These, these other four, these were the original ones. So. That's what showed up, so we'll use this. I'll use new plastic A. That'll be my base, which it should compile. And then I'll go in here and I'll select and I'll say I want, we'll do plastic B, okay? All right, so that's the first step, right? And if I wanna say, let's add another layer, I can go in here, I can click the plus, and I'll just add layer C in here. 
Okay, so this is what I was saying about the whole dynamic workflow of it, which I really like about the new method. You don't have to go in and manually plug in a new one, drag a material function, add it, take it away, so on and so forth. You simply just add or delete as necessary, and you can keep adding that stack. So if you recall, that's why I was saying this whole new material setup that we have here, this is why this kind of acts as our, as our master, right? It's going to define... Our, our layer method for everything below that. Um, so that's why this is all that you really need from a foundational standpoint, it's just this layers connected in. Um, everything else will be controlled through these instances that you do right here, duplicate another one, add different stacks in there, um, add different materials, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep going through here, all right? So uh, obviously this doesn't look ideal, right? We have green everywhere and we need to find a way to blend them. In the traditional way, we would create this layered mask, we'd plug it into um, where it says the mask section, and that's what would define more shelves in the model. Well, we don't have that here. So this brings me to the other new uh, addition to the way that you work with the new layered materials, and that is this thing of material blends. Now, I've created two here before, but um, we'll create one from scratch real quick. So I'm gonna right click, materials and textures, and material layer blend. And I'm just gonna call this one um, RGBA mask. So we know what we're talking about. And I'll double click, we'll go into here. Okay, so so what exactly is the purpose of this one? Um, the, the purpose of this material blend is to define how we're going to blend between our bottom layer and our top layer. Uh, what I mean by that is just, you're gonna have two materials and it's going to say, hey, how do I interact with the one below me? How do I know where I'm supposed to show up or where I'm not supposed to show up? That's this. Uh, again, this, this whole hierarchy is specifically created for the new workflow. So with this, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and, um, in fact, let's just grab our mass that we've been using. So I'm going to go back here, go to textures, and I'm just going to grab this crunch fist. Okay. All right. Now... With this setup, with, with this, this mask that we're creating, right, this material blend, this too is going to serve as kind of a master, um, right? Like we don't need to create a, um, a, a unique material blend for every single mask that we have. Let's really just make one and then reuse it. So to do that, simply just right-click, convert to parameter, and we'll call it mask, I'll say mask input. Doesn't matter what you want to name it, but this is what will be exposed. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create here and append because I don't know if you guys know this, but when you drag off of the white dot, it is just the red, green, and blue channels. So in order to add the alpha channel in the event that we have a four channel mask, uh, I'm going to go ahead to append it. And then we're going to do the last step, which is channel mask parameter. Okay, now I'm gonna explain this one because this is new as well to this whole material layer blending. Um, for any of you though, uh, for, for any of you guys that have set up materials before, right? You'd come off here and say that you want a, um, we'll say we'll component mask. And we get this right. And you get the, the option to uh, switch between red, green, blue, and alpha. Um, this new channel mask is essentially doing the exact same thing, although there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that makes this much more powerful. Uh, in particular, the best thing is that it go it 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 is going ahead and, and pre-computing all of the channels. So on the fly, you're not having to recompile all the shaders and do everything. Um, uh, but also more importantly, this is what we need to use with the new layered setup. So I'll do this. I'll just name this channel selection. Again, doesn't really matter what you guys name it. And then I will plug it into the alpha. Okay. So I'll save this guy. This, this is the setup that we would use. And again, this is going to become essentially a master for the way that we control blending. Um, so whatever our bottom layer is, whatever our top layer is, we are going to select a channel from a mask input, however we define it, um, and then um, that's how it's going to choose to mask stuff. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll take this one. Actually, I'll show you guys which this mask blend, same exact thing, same exact setup, uh, but I've, I've renamed some things. So um, we use as is. Okay, so now we have um, this blend asset. So that's where we're gonna see the new blend uh, layer blend that we've created. So uh, in this situation, let's just use the RGBA 
It's RGBA mask. And here's what's really cool. I'm going to expand this blend asset. And this is what I, I actually really like about the new setup. So anything that we've exposed, right? So if you remember in here, this was converted to a parameter. So was this. They now show up in here where I am able to change the mask and also my channel selection as I see fit. So there's my green, blue, so on and so forth. But here also is something that I think is absolutely beautiful. So let's go back to our textures and let's say I picked the wrong mask here. Let's say I, I wanted this one. I can simply put it in, recompile the shaders, and there you go. Okay, so we've we've obviously created one here for the way that the green material, so this plastic C, interacts with plastic B. So we'll go back in, and if you, if you recall, I said this is kind of a master. I can go in, and I'm going to add that same exact RGBA mask. Okay, and I'll expand these two so you guys can see what's going on here. Because I created in that mask this, this texture as a parameter, right, something that we could control on the outside, you'll notice that it's slightly different. So I can use a totally separate mask for this, right? So let's say, let's say I go in here and I, I want the crunched legs, right? And I use this mask, I can select whatever I want to. It now interacts completely independent of the one below it. Um, so this is a beautiful thing I really like about the new layered material setup. Um, is this that you can change it on the fly without having to go in rehook up nodes re having to switch things so on and so forth uh, so this makes it very very powerful um, and very beautiful so um, again let's let's kind of cover this whole this whole setup and, and the important things behind it okay so first things first is that you know you create your new material right and inside this material you add this layers attribute and you plug it in that's it you leave it alone you then right click create material instance which spawns this guy um, and that's where you go and you start adding your layers and again those layers are built off of this new right click material layer so materials textures material layer uh, these new setups set them up however you want to create whatever kind of materials controls you want now um, actually i forgot to show you this one so with the red one right we created these parameters this is where it shows up now in this one. So if I expand this layer assets, I've got scalar parameters, vector parameters. Those are all those controls that I have. So I can go in here and change my base color. Say I want to switch it to whatever. There it is. So again, right clicking and saying convert to parameter. This is where they will be exposed. And you can do that for all your materials, however complex you want to do that. Okay. So then you add your layers, you can take them away, you can delete them, so on and so forth. And then you apply this to the model. And that is essentially it. So you create, again, your, your master material, create the instance, add your layers based on those new material layers, which are also a function, and, um, and then have your parameters exposed however you need to. And that's it. Um, and, and that would be as far as you need to go. Now, one thing that I do want to cover, which is kind of like a, we'll consider this kind of a little, a little bonus thing, right? In our kind of our older method, right? Like this, this 10 layer blend has a, a beautiful thing called the bake normal, right? Where you can take your model information. So all those details that you've, you've put into it and add it to it. So I want to show you guys that process of being able to hook that up with the new setup. So um, I'll go ahead and open this new material because this is where we're going to control it from our, from our master. Uh, and this is where we'll start kind of separating things out a little bit. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and break off of this one and I'm going to do get material attributes. Okay. And then I'm going to drag off on this one. Now something to note here, you have to drag off of this get material attributes in order to get this set material attributes. Um, for whatever reason, I know that there's some way I think you can expose it. Hey, they fixed it. Never mind. Okay, so you can right click. It's set material attributes uh, and we'll pull up this node. And then this is what we want to plug out. Okay, here's what's cool. I love about this node, this get material attributes. I'm going to go ahead and add one more array element, right? Okay, and I'm going to change this to normal. If you notice, this is everything that would come out of our material attributes. Okay, so I'm going to do my normal. I'm going to go over here, add another one and normal as well. Okay. So the, the process that I'm going to do here is I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to inject a, an additional normal map into 
um, this whole setup. So um, it gives us the chance to add our big normal on top of everything else. So drag out from here and we will do, um, I believe it is blend. It's not normal blend. What are we doing here? I'll double check here. So I created some stuff ahead of time. We'll take our master. Aha! Blend angle corrected normals. Okay, so we'll go here. Blend angle corrected normals. So this will be our additional normal and then I'm going to drag in say for example one of our model specific normals same thing here I'm going to convert it to a parameter so we can change it on the fly and then we'll plug this into base normal and then the result will be pumped out to here and then we save it okay so now I'm going to open up the instance I'm going to show you where this shows up right so We'll close these guys, go back to our materials, open up the new material, and oh, open up the instance. Okay, so there we see the normal details, right? And we'll go through here and we'll see, nope, nothing in there. Nothing there, nothing there. Okay, so where is this, right? Like we converted this to a parameter so we can expose it. You gotta go into the details panel, and that's where we see this new normal. And this is where you can, again, because it is, uh, it's, it's been parameterized, that we can go in here and we can swap this out as needed. So I can say, let's say I'll take this guy, legs, swap them out, and there we go. Now we have our baked information on top of our entire layer stack. So I can still go in here, and let's say that I wanted to, um, I wanted to switch this to blue channel, and let's say I want to change my blue channel to green there you go so the normal information still retains on top of that so we've essentially recreated what we had before with our bake normal but in this case we just have to inject it via this this whole setup by just taking our normal converting to parameter um, and adding it to it um, I'll show you guys here something too real fast I, I won't recreate it in this one but I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I've done here Let's say, for example, that, you know, some of your models have a big normal and some do not, and you want to have the option to be able to switch that on and off. So uh, all I've done over that other setup, right, so this is our parameter blended angle normals, and this came out into our uh, set attributes. I've simply added just a static, uh, a static switch and another three vector um, with this normal color. Now, for those of you who don't know, the color of normal Typically, we think of it as like a 128 in red, 128 in green, and then a 255 in blue. In Unreal, it's 001. Uh, the reason for that is because you can go positive or negative. Uh, just know that if you want a flat normal, just create a three vector with blue at one, red and green at zero. And we plug that into false, and that goes out. So what that looks like in our uh, in the setup here, so again, this is an instance off of the setup that I did that had that switch. Now when I go into my details, I can add the model number or I can choose to switch it off and then it's just the information below as soon as it recompiles. So there you go. So that's, that's another method of being able to switch it on and off. Again, just a little additional control if you need it is that setup. So with that, that kind of concludes this whole uh, kind of video tutorial on the new material layer setup. So I hope it helps you guys um, and good luck.